it's interesting. The, the when I was talking to Peter about this, I think over the weekend, you know, your basic Bourbon Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are not expensive. Um, they are probably hundred thousand a hectare. Okay, maybe not even that. Seven, maybe um, I think I'm thinking euros. About a hundred thousand bucks a hectare. So fifty thousand, forty-five thousand dollars an acre. Not a lot of money. All right. The problem is that the market perception of selling those wines is it ends up being a twenty to thirty dollar bottle of wine or something that you know, we're going to sell very often. Small producers selling those for six to ten euros. This is the problem. I mean, you, we can make great wine from that, but the market holds it down. Then you can go up to um, Premier Cru and Grand Cru. Um, Premier Cru Chassagne currently is going for three million uh, hectare, something like that. And uh, the Batard we bought was around ten million dollars an acre in that ballpark. In that ballpark. And La Lubise Loire bought a parcel, same size as ours, three months later for 30% more. So what one is buying, and yes, it's about a 1% return, cash on cash. But what one is buying, one is buying, in essence, a Picasso, a Rembrandt, um, something that is, you know, we're not creating any more, the proverbial, we're not creating any, any more land. And when you look in the fact that there's 10 hectares of, of Mont Rocher, Eight hectares of Chevalli Montrachet, twelve hectares of Batard Montrachet, three and a half of Bienvenue, and one and a half of Creole Batard. That's it. Um, you can see why the the um, uh, demand is there for those kinds of wines. Um, it's a interesting piece to my business. Um, uh, you get investors in, and this is primarily um, uh, you get a lot of investors when they're buying. It's a way to preserve capital. And I, and, I, and I, you know, joke, people say, oh, it's, it's not a good investment. I said, well, you're buying treasury bonds today at 2%. And uh, what would you rather buy, a U.S. treasury bond or a piece of Grand Cru in Burgundy? And you're getting 1%, and you actually, the dividend is bottles of wine. So it's not a bad deal. <laughs> I think you, you know, is, is, is it liquid? No. But like any real estate investment. So I think you, one has to, to go in with one's eyes open. Um... But uh, I can't make that argument to being a safe investment for the Bourgogne because the Bourgogne I bought in 2005, it's about the same price it is now today in, you know, 2013. So, but the Grand Cru's, um, they don't go up in a straight line, but they continue to go up because you can't create any more. And there's this, and, and they're icons, and they're great ones. Are they worth the money in the bottle? Um, uh, that's all about the market. And um, uh, that's, uh, that's a different issue. But for me, it's great to have it because it um, puts us into the Grand Cru Club. Um, uh, as I've told people, and I'm all very honest about it, didn't change my life from a, from a dollars and cents from the business, one, hardly one iota. But what it does, it, all of a sudden, it gives a certain gravitas to one's operation and the wines. And I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's correct. I get a lot more pleasure in pride out of some of the work we do with our smaller, more difficult vineyards. But the reality is, is that the um, something when you have a Grand Cru, um, people think immediately everything is better. And that's just that's human nature, I think. Uh, whether it's in real estate, I mean, you could have all kinds of junky warehouses and then all of a sudden you buy a property along the loop here in Chicago, you're a big, you know, you're, you're a big real estate guy. You're probably making a lot more money off the warehouses, okay, but in the perception of you know the public you're a different person i think that's a fair analogy to make mm -hmm.